first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio begin on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Peace, peace. Thank y'all for once again coming back to listen to Darlene Bay's show. Um, today we're going to get into the science of sex, the art of holistic healing, and regeneration. Um, quite a bit of information. Um, before we even start, I'm going to name some books in which that definitely need to be in your libraries. Number one is Jewel in the Lotus by Grandmaster Sanyata Saraswati, my teacher, as well as books by Mantak Chia, Pacific One, um, Cultivating the Male Energy and Cultivating the um, Female Energy, those two books by him, as well as also Sexual Reflexology um, by him. Um, Another one uh, is the Tao of Sexology by Dr. Um, Stephen Chang. And Sexual Energy by Dr. Jewel Pokram. And today's show is actually excerpts from my upcoming book, which is called Science of Sex, Art of Holistic um, healing and regeneration, which will be out um, hopefully by September. Um, what we're going to do before we even get into the ritual of sex and the ceremony of foreplay, um, we're first going to go into healing the body through the science of breath. Um, all disease can be remedied. Uh, One of the best ways to do it is to sit upright or lay down. And what you would do is visualize yourself surrounded by a bright golden cloud. And then you would direct the gold light and concentrate the gold light throughout your body and become one with that light. The gold light is a healing light. All right? That is very necessary to imagine, to visualize yourself as such. 
that correlates to another um, technique, which is called um, the deep abdominal breathing or the dantian breathing technique, in which that your dantian is your navel chakra, and what you do is store energy, prana, chi, ki, holy spirit, ra, ashe, all of these words from the various cultures meaning power, life force, universal life force energy, and you will store it into that area, and you can sit or stand or lie down, and you can place your hands on your abdominal area, on your navel area. And for the males, they will place the right hand on top of the navel and the left hand on top of there, which is on top of the right hand, and vice versa for the women. So the women would place their hands, left hand would be on the navel, right hand on top. And you would breathe in and out through your nose, and you would inhale and visualize a golden ball of energy like a sun growing in your lower dantian. And as you exhale, visualize the golden ball intensifying its glow. With each breath, you would see the light growing brighter and brighter. You would do this at least 36 times. All right? Um, throughout the day, um, you can do this to recharge your internal energy. <clears throat> All right? Now, another technique would be to concentrate on your solar plexus. Um this is after you do what is called the Anuma, um, the Anuloma Valoma, which is basically what is called the alternating nostril breath technique. Um, what this technique does um, by you alternating your nostrils, you will breathe in for a count of four, hold it for 16, breathe out for eight, and you alternate through the um, alternate each nostril. All right, so. You will close off your right nostril. Breathe in for a count of four through your left nostril. Hold it for 16. And then breathe out through your right nostril for a count of eight and then reverse. Okay? Now what this exercise does, it optimizes the function between both sides of the brain, the left and the right hemisphere of the brain, which is your, um, the right side is your creative side. The left side is your logical, verbal side. Now, this will make both sides of the brain, the left side, which is responsible for the logical and the right for the creative thinking, to function properly. This will lead to a balance between a person's creativity and logical thinking. All right? The yogis consider this to be the best technique to calm the mind and the nervous system. Now, the reason why you need to be um, calm during sex is because it will make you last longer. It will give you the endurance in order to make sure that you have what is referred to as a full body orgasm, um, whether it's internal or whether if you circulate the energy many times in a microcosmic or macrocosmic orbit and then release, which, of course, you can find out this information um, all by Grandmaster Sanyata Saraswati in his book, Jewel and the Lotus. He give you various techniques in order to master that. Now, um, Let's go back to the concentrating on the solar plexus because that is your abdominal brain, all right? Um, the solar plexus is located um, right above the abdominal area and right below the chest or breast area, right in the center. That is your abdominal brain. Um, it's an important center of the nerves, all right? It's connected with the sympathetic nervous system, all right? Um, you know, it plays an important part, you know, as far as control of the emotions, the various bodily functions. As a matter of fact, it's composed of white and gray brain matter. Um, scientists have even found out that it has neurons in that area just like it does in the brain. It is one of the most vital parts of the body. A blow to the solar plexus is well known to boxing you know, in boxing, that can render the opponent unconscious and helpless. Or even um, it can mean fatality, all right? 
Um, now, you can also store a prowler there, too. It's the um, powerhouse, all right? It is the most important um, of all the supports of the body, you know. And there are really 16 in numbers. It is known fact that men have been instantly killed, you know, by a blow there, you know, to the solar plexus. So the solar plexus is literally the sun of the nervous system. When the sun is shining harmoniously, the whole of the physical system is harmonious. It radiates strength, energy to all parts of the body, thoughts and prana, when directed towards this center through pranayama, will stimulate and awaken the sunshine latent therein. So, um, you can do what's called pranic breathing, in which that we have given this technique, in which that you would concentrate your thoughts there at the solar plex area, breathe in for a count of six, hold it for three, breathe out for a count of six, hold it for three, and at that same time, you are actually bringing prana or raw energy into that particular area, igniting it, all right? And this is necessary because this um, energy expands, all right? So what we are doing is linking the energies in your lower chakras, so that you will not exhibit the devil traits, all right? Lust, greed, jealousy, and hatred. These traits are exhibit because they are deficient in energy. So you have to put energy into these particular areas in order to make sure that you are using your energies properly. So one of the techniques is to sit erect, close your eyes. You can draw in the energy slowly through the left nostril as long as you can do it with comfort. Um, this is another technique, and so you can keep the right um, nostril closed, and you can repeat the OM mentally, the OM sound, OM. Then retain the breath and hold your attention and have your attention um, directed towards the solar plexus and concentrate your mind there. Have the thought centered upon it and do not make any um, strain of the mind or undue effort of any kind. Um, you can direct the energy there and then you can imagine or say to yourself, I am breathing in prana, happiness, joy, strength, vigor, love. All right? Then slowly exhale through the right nostril. Then inhale through the right nostril. Retain it. Um, as before, and exhale through the left nostril. And you can repeat this process about 12 times in the morning. Fear, depression, weakness, and other undesirable emotions, which stands in the way of spiritual advancement, will vanish. You will become more and more confident in success and self-realization. And this is needed, all right, because sex isn't something in order to be played with. It's a very heavy responsibility. All right, it is an accountability. When you merge auric fields, that person's aura can actually stay within the other person's aura for seven years. All right. So, um, so let's say if you had a one night stand, or whatever the case is, you're dealing with energies in which that you don't fully um, comprehend. Know, overstand, understand, or understand. And because of that, um, we see sex as something that is dirty, or see sex as something in which that um, you can just do, and it's just fun. And it's much more than that. With the power of sex, you can actually manifest things that you want into this realm. All right? You can actually reach um, the heights of spiritual enlightenment. You can actually regenerate and heal your body from any sickness. So what Marvin Gaye was talking about when he brought out his song, I think it was in 1983, 84. No. I think it was 82. Um, might have been somewhere around there. Um, I should say in the early 80s. Let's just say that. Um, sexual healing. 
very powerful song. You know, um, you know. So the reason for the solo plexus technique, the and nostril breath technique, is also to open and activate the twelve meridians. You know, in the body, you have two major ones, um, which some count as 14. Um, the two major ones is your governing vessel and your conceptional vessel. Your governing is the energy that goes from the perineum up the spine to the top of the head, and your conceptional is the energy in which that, or the channel in which that goes down from the top of the head um, back to the perineum in the front which makes what is referred to as a microcosmic orbit. Um, as you channel energy through the governing and the conceptional vessel, it activates the, um, the 12 meridians, which are um, symmetrical on the right and the left sides of the body, and they are all connected with each other. When one is affected by a blockage, they are all ultimately damaged. All right, so chi brings this flow into the lungs first, then it travels to the large intestines, from there it goes to the stomach, then to the spleen, next to the heart, small intestines, the urinary bladder and kidneys. Um, after that, um, it goes to the um, pericardium and the triple burner, and finally it goes to the gallbladder, then to the liver, then back to the lungs where it starts its circular journey again. All right, and this is all done within the 24-hour span. All right, like for example, the lungs are activated between the hours of 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Um, the large intestines between 5 a.m. 7 a.m. The stomach between 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. The spleen between 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Um, the spleen, once again, is between 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. The heart between 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. The small intestine between 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. The urinary bladder between 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. The kidneys between 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The pericardium between 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. The triple burner between 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. The gallbladder between 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. And the liver to 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. To a, and it starts back over to the lungs again at 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. So... What it does is that it travels to each of these organs at a specific time of the day, as you hear. Now, the alternating nostril breath techniques help bring in energy in which that if there's any area in your body, as we just mentioned, is affected. So let's say if you have um, asthma or bronchitis, you will wake up during the time of 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning and do the alternate, um, alternating nostril breath technique in order to heal your lungs and to bring prana into that particular area of your body. On your um in your lungs you have five lobes on your right side, four lobes on your left on your left side, which makes nine lobes. Normally we don't deep breathe. We are shallow breathers and so therefore the blood do not get oxygenated properly. Remember we have stated many times before that seventy percent seventy percent of the waste product produced in your body is supposed to be eliminated by via your breathing, 20 percent by your skin, and still um, sweating, oh. and 10 percent through defecation and urination, okay? So this is um, the way in which that your body works, all right? Now, once you have activated those particular channels, um, you can do what is called a microcosmic orbit. And before, actually, before we get to the microcosmic orbit, let's first go into 
um, bringing chi into the navel chakra, the dantian, which we was talking about the deep breathing exercise, in which that you restore the energy at the navel chakra. All right. So first, you want to do the breathing technique for the navel, um, for the dantian, and then once the energy is stored there in the navel chakra, then you want to do the microcosmic orbit in which that. Um, you would bring the energy down to the perineum, up the spinal column, to the top of the head as you breathe in, and then down the front of the body, back to the perineum as you breathe out. And this is the way in which that the males or the men would do it. The women actually can bring the energy up from the perineum to the top of the head and down the back of the spine, down to the perineum in the opposite direction. All right? Or bring energy down from the top of the head, down the spinal column, and up the front of the body. Down the back of the spinal column, up the front of the body again. All right? In a circular motion. Doing those microcosmic techniques, um, we recommend that it would be done in an interval of nine. So you can do it nine times to 18 to, you know, up to 108 or more. You know, what that does is regenerate the body. So this is part of the regeneration portion, all right? Now, you need to regenerate yourself even before the sexual experience, all right? Because when you practice tantric kriya yoga, tantra, um, the breath pulls the shakti, the kundalini magnetic energy into the spine, charging the um, electromagnetic properties of the cerebrospinal fluid, allowing the kundalini to move up the spine. And as the brain bathes in its charged fluid, the nervous system is transformed. Remember, we was already giving you the techniques for the nervous system. So you awaken to a new consciousness. The kundalini is the life force consciousness and the sexual energy. As it moves upward, it enlightens you. It heals you. During the normal sex, the energy flows downward and drains you. All right? Um, one of the techniques taught by Master Sanyata, in which that he initiate um, students into, is called the Cobra Breath. And the Cobra Breath reverses the flow of sexual energy and turns it into um, a most viable resource. The secret teachers of many traditions use Kundalini energy to rejuvenate the body and to empower the mind and to awaken the soul. All right? So, there are many forms of Tantra, but some of the teachings... Um, you know, practice or um, erotic couple therapy, you know. Um, Master Sanyata say he wants to initiate couples, all right, because it's been abused. Individuals have gone out who have gathered these teachings, and they're going around um, misusing and abusing the information, all right. So when you go to Master Sanyata, um, you need to come correct, all right? Now, the cobra breath technique, um, what it does is help bypass the chakra system because the chakra system oftentimes is a lot of negative energies and experiences and traumas and dramas in which that have been stored um, within those seats or centers, because those are conscious seats and centers. They also see through light. And because they are endocrine glands, they're also um, chemical, um, harmonial in nature. All right? And a lot of these experiences that we have had, which is negative specifically, needs to be cleared before you go through the chakra system. And so the um, cobra breath technique is a key to the practice of actually tantric um, kriya yoga. Um, this was a gift in which that was passed down to my um, avatar, Baba G. Um, you know, and um, this is whom in which that um, the techniques was taught to um, Grandmaster Sanyata Saraswati. All right? Um, tantra is sometimes referred to as the path of truth, the way of the heart or the path of commitment. It is um, distinguished by its focus on emotional clearing, self-realization in our daily um, reality 
and using the Kundalini as a spiritual resource is a most powerful tool to enable um, you to manifest fulfillment and prosperity in your life. All right? So Tantra means liberation through expansion, weaving together energy, the Shakti, the Kundalini, and consciousness, Shiva. So you have the Kundalini Shakti, and you have the Kundalini Shiva. The Kundalini Shakti would be referred to within Hebrew as the Shekinah, the divine face of God, all right, which is feminine in essence. In ancient comedic teachings or Tamarian teachings, it would be all set. Now, the Kundalini Shiva is um, also referred to as Brahma, also referred to as um, Ra, also referred to as um, Osa, all right, which is referring to actually to the soul, which is embedded inside of the pineal gland, all right? And so Osset goes through the many caves, which is symbolic to the chakras, in order to find Osa, who's been fragmented, our thinking, um, because we have taken on this material um, dense body, and we have thought that th- we actually think that this dense um, illusion is real. All right. Now, what happens is, is that when this divine marriage takes place in heaven between our set and our saw, between um, Shakti and Shiva, um, it produces Krishna or Christ consciousness. Or Heru. All right, this is what is all this play is actually referring to when you read these various stories. All right. Now, you also want to um, understand the science of sex magic um, at that particular time too, because when the couple is intimate. The auric field becomes one Alright And the thoughts in which that they think at the time um, Are very powerful And actually you can You um, The couple can actually Manifest what they want here Upon planet earth Alright um, What they really talk about in sex magic is um, the ceremony between the sexual union of man and woman. And, you know, it comes from the Western sex magic has its roots in the Holy Kabbalah. And we know that the Holy Kabbalah was remnants of information that was left in the libraries by the Moors once they left um, Europe, in particular um, Granada, Spain, in 1492. Okay. Um, you know, so when you really deal with the um sexual act, very important information. So, um, within an open and respectful um sexual relationship, you can experience yourself in all aspects. All right, um, during sexual arousal, an enormous amount of energy can be channeled upward from the genitals along the spine to the top of the head, and on its way. Up, this energy fills and clears the blockages. All right, um, also in the chakras. All right, so one of the um, things to be careful of is that during sex is the thinking process. You want to be able to think on the same thing. If there's a healing in which that needs to be done or taking place, then the concentration needs to be on the areas in which that needs to be healed. Um, or whole total body healing As a matter of fact The various positions um, Tap into The different organs Of the body Alright um, i give you a couple For example When the woman is riding on top of the man And the man is laying flat um, He is moving up underneath And what that does Is Heal his heart Alright um, So 
there's many different techniques, but you know, different positions, but these particular ones heal areas in which that is very needed. All right. Um, what is referred to as the doggy style um, channels the energy from the kidneys, which is symbolic to the water element, and it channels the energy up towards the head for the woman, and it also helps with the energy at, um, for the male at his kidney area. So the kidneys are healed by the male and the female in that particular position. So the positions have sexual healing opponencies to them. So you have to keep that in mind, too. All right? Now, when you're dealing with the Kundalini, we know that it's um, 6,000 degrees in temperature is equivalent to the um, surface of the sun, as a matter of fact, you know? And... The energy in which that you have have the ability in order to channel um, this this melanin, I should say, have the, has the ability in order to channel the full potency and potential of this. All right. Um. So uh, when the Kundalini Shakti um, is awoke and she unites with the um, supreme static. Consciousness, which is Shiva Then the consciousness is asleep To the world And is one with the light of all things But when the serpent is asleep Which is the Kundalini Shakti um, The man is awoke To the world So We know where individuals Are at With their conscious level Based on the things in which that they say you can range where the Kundalini is located at within the individual. All right? Because when the Kundalini has gone up into the higher chakras, the universe um, is open. All right? And the individual sits with the gods and goddesses. Okay? Um, you can get a book called The Serpent Power by um, Avalon, right? But his name, I think, is Sir John um, Woodruff, right? Good book. He tells people in there to be um, individuals specifically, um, to be careful of the raising of the Kundalini because of the possibility of spontaneous human combustion, and um, that warning was not necessarily for those of um, darker hue. All right? Now, let's get into the anatomy of the male organ. All right? The testes is nothing more than the ovaries. The vas deferens is nothing more than the fallopian tubes within the woman. The prostate gland is a shrunken uterus. The penis is an elongated clitoris of the vagina. The chest is um, mammalous glands of the breast. Okay? So, the testes and the ovaries are the seeds and origin of creation. The ability to acknowledge that you can create. That's what it's symbolic to metaphysically. Esoterically Alright That's the spiritual function of the genitalia The vast deferent and fallopian tubes um, The consciousness that's connected between uh, What you potentially can create And how you can nurture that which that you create the Prostate and the uterus The actual house that contains the seed The thoughts That you desire to bear into your life How you can choose to nurture your desires The penis and the clitoris of the vagina, the gateway to receive and re, um, release your desires. The chest and breast, your capacity to nurture yourself. That's what they're all symbolic to. Now, 
scientists, according to scientific research, they have shown that the um, that based on the age of the individual um, and the erection angle can show actually determine health, you know, of a male. So his erection angle can actually determine his health. Is a determiner of his health and biology. All right, so um, if the penis is like sticking straight up when he's erected, then that's like an erection of a teenager. Um, if it's like about, which is like about 45 degrees, if it's down to about 60 degrees, that's like an erection of a 20 year old. When it's about 90 degrees, that's like the erection of a 30-year-old. When it's about person is about 40, that's like the erection of about 100 and, um, 105 degrees. It's a 40-year-old. 135 degrees is like a 50-year-old. And if you notice, the weaker the erection, the older the individual is. All right? Now, it doesn't have to be that way. There are herbs in which that can be utilized in order to strengthen that, um, one in particular is Yohimbi, in which that, um, for those who have um, heart um, situations, um, I wouldn't recommend taking because it does um, increase the heartbeat. Um, but it can be used in small, small dosages. Um, but um, you can use, um, it can be used. Um, honey goat weed, um, sorplemento, sarsaparilla, pigium, um, damiana for the male and female, and even for the female, don quai and red raspberry um, helps with um, the blood um, being um, engorged within the um, clitoris, the clitoris, because it also um, gets larger. So, the correlation between the age and the um, erection angle is um, is probably best remembered by looking at the hand, okay, with the fingers, five fingers spread out, all right, and that determines the power of the erection, all right. Now, it is thought that there is four types of of energy necessary to create an erection. If a man um, cannot achieve an erection, it's because one or more of these four energies is lacking. He's deficient. All right? Um, the four esoteric energies of erection are the blood energy, the muscle energy. Um, problems with the muscles anywhere in the body can prevent um, an erection. Nerve energy, a mental or nervous condition can prevent a man from having an erection. Bone energy, bone cancer or arthritis, rheumatism can prevent a man from achieving an erection. All right? So, um, these energies, levels in the body, must be strong. So, the blood energy, um, we would deal with the blood cleansing herbs in particular. Um, the, herb, um, the herbs to use would be chaparral, golden seal, um, garlic, Black walnut, wormwood, burdock, yellow dock, patiaco. All right, those are the blood cleansing herbs. They destroy parasites, viruses, bacteria, worms, in order to strengthen the blood. All right, once the blood is um, clear of those particular poisons and toxins, then you can do the blood rebuilder, a blood builder. You can use alfalfa, wheatgrass, corella. All right, some say spirulina. These can be used. Um, Simos, bladderwrack, kelp, and dos. All right, these are all blood building herbs, all right? Then um, that helps also with the muscle energy, all right? 
um, CMOS is very good actually for all four of those energies. All right, another name for CMOS is Irish CMOS. All right, that's also what they refer to it as. All right. Now, um, now there's a rhythm for the brothers. Um, also, is based on their age, and it's um according to um Dr. Stephen Ch- Stephen Chang or Stephen Chang, in his um Tao Sexology book, he speaks about it's um the age times point two, which is the frequency of ejaculation. Um, in days um, relative to a person's age. So let's say if the um, man is 30 years old, then his rhythm is six days, because 30 times 0.2 equals six. All right. Thus, to maintain his health, a 30-year-old should not have an ejaculation more frequently than every six days, even though the body produces semen within 72 hours, three days. That is symbolic to the three days and three nights. The reason why Jesus is symbolic to a fish is actually just talking about semen. All right? It's a known fact um, within the Holy Quran. It um, teaches this science as well as within um, other science-related fields, biology in particular. It states that the sperm travels up the spinal column from the prostate fluid to the cerebral, um, to the spinal fluid to the cerebral fluid to be baptized in the river Jordan, which is actually what is referred to as um, the third ventricle, which is filled with cerebral fluid. The pineal gland overlooks that area, so the sperm travels up within the male to sit with God and the twenty-four elders, because the twelve pair of cranial nerves sits around. The pineal gland and the 24 elders are symbolic to the 12 pair cranial nerves, 12 times pair, which is 2, 24. So that goes back to the book of Revelations. The book of Revelations is nothing more than a book in which that explains the opening of the seven seals, which is your chakra system. So as the sperm travels up, it takes in all of that consciousness through each of the chakra systems to be within the abode of God, the kingdom of God. Hence, the kingdom of God is within you, Luke 17, 21. And then the sperm received the spark, the transferring of soul energy, life energy. And then it travels back down the spinal column to reside within um, the testicles to be gushed forth. So, even though the man might be 30 years old, um, you know, and he might have to wait six days, it's not saying that he, um, and you know, um, to replace the nutrients lost from one ejaculation, um, you have to wait six days. Um, this man actually can have sex daily, or four to five times daily, but he can only um, lose his semen once every six days. That's what that is symbolic to. Okay, so um, that is the science of retention. Now, um, Stephen Ching also goes into the fact of the shallow strokes and the deep thrust strokes in which that the energy is circulated. All right, so about at 98% of orgasm, the male will pull out of the vaginal canal pull up his anal muscles and perineum, look up towards the sky, and channel the force up the spinal column and down the front, circulating it seven times. And then go back in and continue um, the thrust techniques, whether it's shallow or deep thrust. You read the book and you understand what it's talking about. I won't get into it here. And... um, and um, with that, um, each time he gets to the point or near the point of orgasm, he would channel the energy up. And he has to master this because I get into it a little bit later about the whole back techniques 
And once he learned how to do it at least ten times, he would have activated um, all of his, all of his spiritual centers. All right, but um, let's get back to the um, symbolism of the phallus or the penis and um, understanding it. Um, the top of the penis symbolizes the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the prostate gland, the adrenal gland, thymus, heart, um, lungs, nose area. That's what the head of the penis symbolizes as far as in reflexology. Below the head um, of the staff um, and goes into the spleen, the mouth, the stomach, and the pancreas. Below that, the liver, the eyes, the small intestines. Below that, um the large intestines, kidneys, ears, bladder, and then the testicles are connected to all of the glands. And this is where the science of Tuscular breathing comes in at for the brothers, learning how to breathe in through their testicles, in which that this is taught by um, uh, Master Mantai Chia, um, males how to cultivate sexual energy. Okay? Um He would sit erect on the edge of the chair. He can sit nude if he choose to, um, cool, slightly warm. And um, he would center his attention around his shoulder. And he would inhale slowly and pull the testicles up, holding for about a count of 15, and then exhale slowly and lower the testicles. And as um, he inhaled, he would think of the breath going into the testicles and filling them up. And at the same time, raise um, the testicles or the testes with the breath, you know. So then he would gently continue inhaling and exhaling with the testicles until he feels a lot of cold energy in the, in the shoulder. All right, he would do this breathing, you know, in a round of about nine and then rest and practice again for about three to six sets. After doing this for about 10 to 14 days, he'll notice um, that the testicles would become activated each time he breathes. When this occurs, then he know that he's completed the exercise, uh, um, the exercise properly. All right. So um, he can continue um, guiding the cool energy up to shoulder into the perineum by inhaling and pulling this um, up slightly on the testicles. He will put his mind on the perineum and hold it there. Inhale and exhale three times to build up the testicle energy. Now begin to draw the energy from the testes up the back channel, which is called the shashuna, um, as it's um, sipping on a straw. Um, arch the lower back outward so that there's no um, curve in it. And this allows the energy to move up the spine easily. All right. Do this for a count of six. Then lower the back to return to normal. Then breathe the energy up to the solar plexus and allow the energy to rest there for about two to three minutes. Then put energy up to the back of the head, inhale and exhale, you know, um, at the testes, and pump the energy um, up by contracting the anal and the perineum. And place your tongue uh, at the upper palate of the mouth. And uh, move the energy up towards the crown chakra. And you may feel the sensation that your head is spinning. And you would count 36 revolutions. This will help memory and clear the thinking. Then allow the energy to diffuse into the head. All right? Um, you continue um, pumping the energy into the head for three to six um, sets. And then you can allow the energy to diffuse through the head and the body, allowing yourself to feel the cold energy. Don't force the process. You don't want to um, heat up the energy. Um, it cannot be stored in the um, brain. is heat. So... Um, the cool energy can be stored in the brain, all right? And um, that's where the males store their energy at or can store their energy at, all right? Now, you can also do um, what is called seminal kung fu for men, in which that um, you can massage the testicles very um, um, lightly, um, each one, um, several times, 36 times each. And then um, you can um, then hold them, grasp them with um, grasp them with your right hand, and take your left hand and rotate in a counterclockwise position, and then reverse. And then you take your left hand and grasp the testicles or the scrotum sac and um, rot- um, rotate 
I'm at the navel chakra, the right hand in a circle of motion. All right, so you know, in a clockwise position. So, in other words, the left hand is going in a counterclockwise position, and you can rotate that um, 24 times, and then in a count, and then in a clockwise position, it can be done 36 times. All right, and then afterwards, you can take both hands. Remember, we said like the male. He would um, place his um, left hand over top of his right at the navel chakra or either what is called the sperm palace, which is about um, two to three inches below the navel chakra, and place the hands there. And this will manufacture more semen um, within the body. All right, so these are just simple techniques, but they um, definitely work. And they have a power, you know, you can actually feel, All right? So um, we were talking about the healing effects of the whole back um, for the males. And um, the whole backs, you know, is for superior orgasm, you know, full body orgasm. But they also have healing effects on both the men and the women, you know what I'm saying? So, like, for example, um, if we was talking about the man getting up to about 98% of about the orgasm and he stops and he pull up his anal muscles, what's called the day exercise, the women would refer to it as the Kegel exercise and pull up that area um, and stop the um, stop it from happening, stop the orgasm. He would strengthen and energize the body. If you do it twice, he would energize and strengthen the eyes and the ears. If he did it three times, he would strengthen the immune system, increase the body resistance, and retard the aging process. If he did it four times, he would strengthen and energize the internal organs. At five, he would improve the circulatory system and prevent strokes and on varicose veins. At six, he would energize the bones and prevent arthritis. At seven, he would energize and tone the muscular system. At nine, he would develop a strong aura. Excuse me, at eight, he would develop a strong aura. At nine, he will heal all kinds of sickness. At ten, the man becomes completely psychic and very spiritual since the pineal gland is fully energized. All right? Now, think about when, just think about if you master these sciences, how potent the sperm would be when it travels up the spine, brothers, to receive the spark of God. Meaning more energy would be endowed within that particular sperm. In other words, that Christ. In other words, um, we already came back here as the Christ. The fact that you beat out, um, you know, nowadays, you know, about 400 million sperms. All right, Dr. York said it was 777,777,777 germ cells called sperms um, within the body at one time. So just think about you being out all those millions and millions of sperms to get here into the physical flesh. Okay? So... This is a very powerful sequence when you think about it. And we know that the pineal gland is the master gland of the body. It is the um, major endocrine gland in the brain. All right? The Carius, the French philosopher, said that the soul is embedded inside of the pineal gland. All right? If you read um, information from the um, Anthroposophical Society by Rudolf Steiner, who broke away from the Theosophical Society, up on the Mount of Avaski, who broke away from the Rosicrucians. All of that is the same Rosicrucian teachings, which is more science, actually. All right? The remnants of the ancient comedic mystery school, what is called Herbach. The light teachings. Anyway, he says that the 12 constellations is seen under the dome of the filaments and is reflected under the dome of the human brain, or what is called the human being skull. All right, and the reason why 
what Osana said is because within the brain, um, they're called the cranial nerves, and they sit, they sit around in a circle and um, sit around a circle and circle the pineal gland. All right, Master Sanyata speaks about this within his um, book, um, Jewel and the Lotus. All right? And these 12 pair cranial nerves is the olfactory nerve, the optic nerve, the ocular motor nerve, um, the trochlear nerve, the trigeminal nerve, the, ab- um, the abducian nerve, the uh, facial nerve, the vascular uh, bulla clara nerve, um, the glossal um, um, phageneal nerve, the vulgus nerve, the accessory nerve, and the hypoglossial nerve. All right, I think that was it. So those um, nerves comes in pairs, and it's 12 pairs, which is symbolic to, like we said earlier, to the um, 24 elders that sit around the throne of God. So the throne of God in his kingdom is the pineal gland. The kingdom is the brain via the mind, which spans the whole 76 quintillion miles diameter um, of the universe. Right? You can get that information from um, the nation of God's on earth, as well as also um, within the, um, which is called the 120 lessons, and you can get that information from the Nation of Islam from the Student of Roman lessons. All right. It speaks about the universe. So when you go to Revelation 4 4, it says, um, Round the throne was four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. The four and twenty elders fell down before him that sat on the throne and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Amen. No, hallelujah. Amen. So, when you read that, you know, um, you know, they refer to, you know, Amen, that hidden force, you know, you know, so that is the hidden force within you, your soul. Now, when these glands are activated, the 12 pair cranial nerves that sits around the pineal gland, the pineal gland is fully activated, as we said, through the whole back technique, what it does is give you extra sensory perception and awareness of information about events external to the psyche that are not gained through the senses alone. You know what I'm saying? You know, oftentimes they dis, um, they're described as the um, clairvoyance, clear audience, clear sentience, which is intuition, um, clear guestance, um, precognition, which is future telling. It's like chemistry, telepathics, telekinesis, which is mind over the body, and being able to move objects with the mind and vice versa. All of this goes back to 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, where it speaks about now concerning spiritual gifts, brother, and I will not have you ignorant. Now, there are diversities of the gifts, but the same spirit. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it's the same God who worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given unto every man to profit with all. For to one is given the spirit of the word of wisdom, to another the words of knowledge by the same spirit, to another the faith by the same spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, and to another diverse kinds of tongues. So all of this is talking about um, the so-called non-fruits of Christ. In other words, your Christ consciousness and what is endowed with once you reach that particular level or that state of consciousness. Okay. Now, that's the science of the male. Let's get into the woman. When you get into the reflexology zones of the um, women's sexual organs, um, the clitoris is symbolic to the pineal gland, the pituitary gland. Um, you know, the head of it as you go up, um, symbolic to the adrenal and the thymus gland. Um, inside of the vaginal walls, you have the G spot, which sits about an inch to inch and a half to three inches inside of the vagina, um, the inner lips, um, the uthero, 
um, sponge of the clitoris. Um, all of that is symbolic to the kidney area. And then as you go further up, um, the vaginal canal, the liver, up further, the spleen and the pancreas. And then before you go near the cervix, which um, if a woman have dimples, we we'll get into that too. If a woman have dimples, she have a double ring um, cervix, which means that the cervix will become acceptable for the penis to extend if the penis is longer to extend. But the male um, don't really want to go into there because it can actually cause the women problems. All right, she want to keep the um, cervix area closed. Um, you know, not to get it um, get bacteria um, into that area. But the area right before that, as we were saying, to the cervix is the heart and the liver and the lungs. All right. So, um, the reflexology is is that the penis um, has to be long enough in order to and fat enough in order to reach these particular areas because there's grooves, as you would know, brothers and sisters, um, along um, the way in the vag- um, vagina canal, in which that of um, somebody to um, the nerve. And then it's all there, in which that gives forth the pleasure. All right? And so the area above the um, cervix enters into what is called the uterus. Now, and then the ovaries, that sits on the side, the left and right. Now, of course, when you look at the picture, it looks like an unk, actually. And that's where the unk symbol comes from. If you um, check out any of the presentations by um, Ashwa Kwesi, he speaks about this. Well, he has spoken about this. Um, the uterus is suspended within the pelvis by a group of um, ligaments, strings, in which that aids in keeping all of the um, digestive organs in their proper place. The uterus, along with the um, ovaries and the kidneys, contain and stores all of the sexual energy within the woman. All right? When a woman is born, she actually has um, potentially the reserves of one million eggs. All right, this correlates to um, the tablespoon of semen by the male in which that um, has so many nutrients in it. I think it's like um, two cups of milk, two New York House porter steaks, six oranges, eight eggs, two lemons, you know, um, and so forth and so on. This is all nutrients you know, in the form of um, what they refer to as amino acids, enzymes, vitamins, minerals, within that um, one tablespoon of semen. And so every time that he ejaculates, he's losing his life force, and this is the reason for that information on which that we um, taught a little bit earlier and how to retain his life force, all right, and learn how to circulate that energy. And it's the same for um, the woman you know, um, many changes can occur in the in the um, menstrual cycle of the woman. Um, as we know, that uh, menstrual cycle is based on 28 days um, cycle, which is correlates to the moon, and the moon um, controls the water tide of the planet. It also influences the menstrual um, of the woman. All right. Now, and she learns what is called just like the male had. Tesla breathing, the woman has ovarian breathing, right? This is a technique that can preserve the life of the ovaries and prevent um, energies um, being swandered also from the, um, by the, um, from the woman. Um, women should um, only ovulate and menstruate the number of times necessary to create the number of children she desires or they desire. If a woman is only interested in having four children, then actually only eight to ten menstruation periods should occur within her life. This also means that she um, should only ovulate eight to ten times within her life. All right? So learn and practice the ovarian breathing exercise, and um, this can become a reality. Um, also, um, doing what is called a day exercise by pulling up your anal muscles and perineum, um, um, ladies, sisters, um, goddesses, y'all can um, cut out um, um, the number of days of the menstrual cycle to the t- um, to the point of where you might just spot. All right. Um, actually, 
what we have found out through scientific research is that the woman menstruates for a long period of time because she feels oppressed. Okay? Um, so um, what this does is put and um, put the emotions and the feelings uh, back into your hands and not being manipulated by um, the males. All right? So... Um, the ovarian breathing exercise involve a gentle contraction of the chi muscle. Um, you know, um, the various positions will be described, which is, you know, the sitting, the standing, and the lying down. It can be done either of those ways. And you will focus your attention on both of the ovaries. Then you will gather um, more energy into the area described as the ovarian palace, which is about three inches below um, the navel chakra, as we said, where the sperm palace is for the male, from which that you will move the energy through the uterus to the perineum. From there, you will guide um, the energy up the back to the brain and then use your tongue as a switch. You will guide the energy down to the navel chakra where within you it would be stored there. All right? Um, you have noticed that the energy of the um, ovaries is regarded as hot energy. All right? So the hot energy is stored in the navel. Now, it can also be stored in the heart, but in the early stages of practice, we advise um, you to store the sexual energy in the navel. And as your practice continues, you can store it in the heart to increase love, joy, and compassion. All right? Now, to facilitate the study of the female orgasm, the orgasm has been separated actually into nine steps or stages of experience. These nine steps or joined together in various degrees of overlaps, creating a multi-level experience. All right, a woman experiencing a complete orgasm, or nine levels of orgasm, undergoes nine stages of blooming until she finally opens up and surrenders herself to the man who has served her. Now, at four, um, the woman can have a genital orgasm, but that is not a four-body orgasm. Um, that isn't reached until step nine. So the male has to learn those hold back techniques in order to get the woman to these um through these nine stages. All right, that is the importance of it. And also he has to learn um um the counts of the shallow and deep thrust strokes in which that is mentioned by Dr. Um Stephen Chang. Now each level of orgasm energizes certain parts of the body just like it did for the male, it does for the woman too. And evokes a certain um Predictable response in the woman All right At one The lungs are energized The woman sighs She breathes heavily And salivates Two um, um, The heart is energized The woman while kissing the man Extends her tongue out to him um, According to um, Xu Wen Of the classical um, Internal yellow emperor He states that The tongue corresponds to the heart All right Um now, so does um, various other parts of the body, all right, such as the clitoris and the head of the penis. Um, also, at three, the um, spleen, pancreas, and the stomach is energized. Um, and this is told, or, you know, the obvious response is that as her muscles become activated, the woman grasps and holds the man tightly. On four, the kidneys and the bladder, the woman experiences a series of vaginal spasms at this time and secretions begin to flow. Four, um, the bones, the woman joints loosens and she begins to bite the man. Um, six, the liver and nerves, the woman um, gyrates like a, um, like a serpent trying to wrap her arms and legs around the male. Um, seven, the blood is energized. Um, the woman's blood is boiling and she's fanatic, tr fanatically trying to um, touch the man everywhere. Eight, the muscles. Her muscles totally react, relaxed. She bites even more and grabs the man's nipples. Nine, the entire body is energized. She collapses in a little depth. She completely surrenders to the man and is completely open up. All right, that is a full body orgasm. All right. Um, if y'all never experienced it, I'll give you um, 
how you know is because you go into like a little seizure when your whole body is jumping and you feel the currents going up your spinal column and it feel like electricity is flowing throughout your whole body in which that is causing your body to have a spasm and jump your legs, your arms, you know, other portions of your body. That is a full body orgasm. That's how I knew that my son was coming to the planet Earth. You know, I know exactly what day and what time that my son came here and he was conceived. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure some of y'all might not be able to know that, you know. But, um, you know, I was based on um, that particular experience, you know. So, um, let's get into now the... um, the physiology and the physical characteristics and how you can tell also. Like, for example, um, if you look at the woman's or the male hands, you can tell about the shape and the size of the vaginal canal and of also of the penis, right? So if the man has um, short, um, stubby or thick Fingers, then that would mean the same for his penis. Now, all of this is about 90% accurate, you know, so it's not 100%, but it is definitely um, something in which that you can um, utilize, engage. All right? Um, so if all men fingers are fleshly, wide, and thick, it is an indication that he have a thick penis. If all of the men fingers are thin, then it would indicate that he have a thinner penis. Um, long fingers especially... The first one in the case of long penis, um, a good shape um, thumb, you know, um, on the male symbolizes the head of the penis. All right, so um, you um, that's how you also know. So, like for example, um, a mushroom um, penis with a large head and a shallow and a shallow or narrow, excuse me, um, shaft is best for maximum. Um, vaginal stimulation Alright um, And you can tell that um, Based on um, The top part of the thumb being fat And then the shower, um, Narrow shaft Of the thumb Okay um, For the woman um, Fat thumb um, Heads with a narrow um, shaft Is equivalent to a tight vaginal opening with a um, vaginal canal that is white on the inside, um, that is more suitable for a mushroom-sized um, penis. The thumb that is not fat at the uh, finger um, nail or end, but a more tubular in shape reflects of vagina as tubular in shape. Short fingers um, 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 is a actual sign of a short and narrow va- um, vaginal canal. Okay. Um, we're going to get to some question and answerings um, here pretty soon, um, within the next um, seven minutes or so. But I just want to finish going through this information. Um, you can tell also by... Um, the eyebrows, if the person has thick eyebrows, strong eyebrows, then that's an indication that they have a um, um, strong sex drive. All right? If they have um, thin um, eyebrows, then they might not be as so sexual. It also is symbolic to the fact that they might not have as much pubic hair. Um, if they have the thick eyebrows, they have more pubic hair also. All right? Um, if you look at the nose... The nose is long. It indicates for a woman a deep um, tubular um, vagina. If the nose is small, it indicates a warm personality. Um, the broad, flat nose indicates a quiet, domestic, and um, dependent personality. Um, the fine, thin, bony nose indicates a sensitive and more nervous and um, often erratic personality. Um, the hawk or hook nose indicates a um, energetic and often sexually aggressive personality. A woman with a broad, flat nose is um, more likely to be um, quieter, more um, domestic, and dependent on a man. 
Um, a woman with a depressed root or base of the nose is very aggressive and very um, emotional. All right. Um, the male features, if a um, man's lips are wide and thick, there's an indication of a bigger penis. Then small lips in the case of smaller penis. Um, a thick, flat nose in the case of thick penis shaft. A long nose in the case of long penis. Um, deep eyes with um, thin skin, eyelids in the case of long penis. A full, long eyebrow in the case of strong um, long penis, and that's what we were saying earlier. And if the area of the ears um, um, are long, um, it indicates um, a strong penis of good size. All right, you can also um, use the eyes. Um, large eyes in the case of period lovers, small eyes in the case of rational mind. You can um, the small ears in the case deficiency, um, deficient um, kidney energy, and weak sexual potential. Um, an ear that is thick and fleshly all around um, is a sign of good health and strong sexual potency. Large ears. From that protrude um, from the head with um, fat lobes in the case of good sexual potential and strong kidneys. All right. Um, the teeth is also um, indicator. All right. Large teeth in the case of passive and sexually aggressive personalities, small teeth, um, the opposite. You know, so um, these are all things that we have to look at. You know, um, the mouth size also. Um, person with um, lower lip is especially sensitive to touch. You know, whoever um, larger lower lip. Um, it says um, these persons. Excuse me. These um, those persons with lower lip. Um, is um, especially sensitive to touch, uh, will usually fall in love and enjoy sex before engaging in an intellectual relationship with their lover. Um, to be effective in the stimulation of one's partner, the lips must be moist, which is a sign of sexual arousal in both men and women. Um, the mouth and genitals are considered the opposite poles of the body, and as such, one is regarded as the reflection of another. And thus, when a um, person talks, um, this indicates that the person is sexually... Um, can mean actually that the person is sexually frustrated energy is channeled through conversation rather than sexual expression. If the person has a large mouth, it indicates that the person has a tendency to scream aloud during orgasm and has a large capacity for sex. All right. Um, even the buttocks. Um, especially on the women, um, can tell or uh, give signs to the sexual nature. Um, the buttocks dipping um, down in the case of strong sexual drive. A big buttocks in the case of strong, healthy, good wife and mother. A um, sharp upper buttocks in the case of weak sexual drive. And a small buttocks for rounding up and down in the case of a medium sex drive, all right? Now, Dr. Drew Pukram, she breaks down in her sexual energy book that a woman with the um, large buttocks, um, the one in particular, um, the buttocks that dips down, um, in which that indicates a strong sex drive is also an indication of a woman um, intellectual capacity. And that makes sense because right above the crack of the behind is the seat or the abode of the Kundalini energy, in which that when it is moved up the spinal column, it awakens um, those seven states of consciousness. It opens the seven seals, and it brings enlightenment. Okay. Um, the breasts um, also... Um, can um, symbolize the sexual nature, the um, plate type of breast indicates 
a lower sex energy, the bold type of breast in the case of healthy sex drive, the bald type of breast with um, large nipples, um, and um, aureola um, in the case of a very strong and forceful personality. Um, the mountain peak type of breast is um, shaped like a peak with nipples um, pointing up. This in the case of a woman who is very warm and passionate. Um, you know, in the pendulum um, type of breast, if the supporting muscles are strong, in the case of strong sexual p- um, potential, if the muscles are flat or flabby, in the case of weaker sex drive. All right? So, by mastering these particular sciences of sex, all right, you can bring about um, the holistic health and the regeneration um, part of it, in which that is um, when the man and woman um, become one. That's called the blending of the um, conduits. And that's what we're talking about, that the auras become one. All right? Um Go in. All right. Um, we're back, and we're gonna go to one three four three. Caller one three four three, and then with one three four three, you're on air. Yes. Caller. You're on air. We can go to nine zero four four. Caller, you're on air. Hello. Yes, greetings. How you doing, brother? Hey, I'm all right. How are you? All right. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask a question about um, uh, about celibacy. Um. That's something that I have been trying um, as of late, and uh, <laughs> it's been kind of hard getting through it. But um, I was just wondering. I mean, is that is that something that um, would help with with rejuvenation? You were talking about, um, uh, you know, just um, withholding the semen, and uh, I was just wondering, um, like, do you know, like, some techniques or something that you know that just to help with 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 you know just doing that. Yeah, well, celibacy uh, means that you're dealing with yourself. And uh, when that is the case, then masturbation would be um, utilized in order to raise the energies up and circulate in a microcosmic or macrocosmic orbit. So, once again, you would get to the point of uh, reaching 98% of um, orgasm, pull up your anal muscles and perineum, channel the energy up, work as you breathe in, and then down as you breathe out from the top of the head back to the perineum, and circulate that energy seven times. And once again, um, when you get to the point of um, 98% of orgasm, again, you would do the same thing over and over again, and you would do it, um, like we said, based on the same hold back techniques, you know, and you can um, have it um, according to um, those who practice Tantra, um, Kriya Yoga, um, you can actually um, have a genital orgasm after you circulate the energy. If you study the um, Taoism, you know, um, then um, you can retain that energy within yourself and have a internal orgasm. So it's based on what school of thought and which that you um, study from. Oh, okay. Well, um, I was wondering, I mean, is there any way to, you know, raise your consciousness in that way just, you know, just by um, just doing celibacy alone? Because I didn't... Um, because I had, you know, I wasn't doing anything, like no kind of uh, nope. ejaculation at all. Right. Well, um, yes, you can do um, certain breathing or pranayama techniques, breath techniques, breath control, in which that you can um, um, do what is called the pranic breathing um, technique, in which that we often talk about, in which that you can breathe in for a count of six, hold it for three, out for six, hold it for three, or breathe in for a count of seven, hold it for one count, out for seven, hold it for one count, and do that a hundred times. Um, 
either or a um, hundred times a day. So you can do it that way by breathing in more um, prana breath or breathing. Um, you know, so practice qigong, um, tai chi. You know, so I mean, there's definitely many things that you can do in order to um, cause the upswelling of energy, which is the kundalini within the body. The more energy that you can store, um, the more um, the kundalini will arise or there's be an upswelling of energy at the base of the chakras um, into the higher chakras. All right, but um, for a person who is celibate, it takes a longer um, amount of time, all right, to reach spiritual enlightenment than it would for a person who practices Tantra Kriya Yoga or Tao Sexology. Oh, okay. Okay. You can um, also practice. You can also practice Kundalini Yoga, in which that would cut down, um, um, cut down on the um, years in which that it would take. I um, mean, practicing the Kundalini Yoga, um, it actually can speed up um, spiritual enlightenment and cut down on the number of years that it would take. Normally, it would take an individual who's trying to practice celibacy probably 20 years in order to reach spiritual enlightenment compared to a person who studies um, Tantra Kriya Yoga or um, Tao Sexology or Kundalini Yoga. And Kundalini Yoga in practice, they actually, um, you can do it within um, a two-year span. Okay. Okay. Um, it seems it seems like that you, you master uh, a lot of a lot of different things in these, um, in these areas. I was just wondering, like, what kind of, what kind of things have you experienced, you know, as a result of all your studies and, uh, you know, these techniques? Well, um, like we were saying, the full body orgasm, um, in which that um, is probably one of the more profound um, things in which that you can experience when your whole body feel like um, you're having an orgasm, when you feel the energy throughout your whole body instead of just at the genital area, there's a release. You know, but you're feeling like a whole um, release from the whole body. Um, so um, I felt that um, many of times. Um, also, um, uh, when, uh, I mean, when that, sort of like as along the lines mm-hmm. of like, um, yeah, like along the lines of um, enhanced, you know, mental capacity or uh, like, you know, yeah. things you well, said. Um, right. Well, I can, um, being the, when the pineal gland is fully activated, I know I've been able to. Um, see the future events, tell what was getting ready to happen. Um, I was able to, you know, um, so I had um, clairvoyance. Um, also, I had clairaudience. I was able to do remote viewing. I was able to take my mind um, into um, certain situations and know what was going on. So um, in that regard, yes, there are um, siddhas or cities in which that is definitely um you know, produce, you know, by practicing these techniques. Wow, okay. All right. Well I mean I I appreciate it. That's all on like most of the only the questions that I had to ask. Okay. All right, yeah, we'll go thank to you, brother. Oh you're welcome, brother. We're gonna go to the next caller. Um number ending in five seven nine zero nine Seven, um, five. Excuse me. Five seven nine zero. You on the air? Greetings. You on the air? Two hundred one area code. Two hundred one area code. And it is five seven nine zero. You're on the air. You have a question? All right, we can go to the next caller. Seven zero zero two, and then seven seven. Excuse me, seven zero zero two. You're now on the air. Roll back, brother. Aline. How you doing, brother? I'm doing all right, brother. This is brother Markel from Greenville. All right, all right. How you doing? Right. I'm doing all right, brother. 
Um, <clears throat> I had a question. Um, um, when, like during the intercourse, and like you were saying, at ninety eight percent, you wanna you wanna pull out at ninety ninety eight percent. Okay. What type of technique could I do um, to to hold it at ninety eight percent? You know, because I I've, I've tried, but you know, I just you know I, I'll explode. Okay. Um, well, if you are trying to, um, if you would pull up your anal muscles and perineum, that would stop it, and look up towards the skies or heaven with your eyes closed, um, getting your focus off of, um, you know, of the sister, you know, who is before you, you know, for you can channel that energy outward, or she can reach around um, your buttocks area and press the indenture, which is called a perineum, which lies um, halfway between your anus and your shoulder sac, and she can press that, what is called a million-dollar spot, in order to... um stop the um, orgasm, or um, she can also press about an inch or so underneath the right nipple, um, that area, and actually stop the um, orgasm from occurring too. So there's several ways in which that can be done. You know, you just have to find a way in which that works best for you. Um, You might not need to go 98%. You know, you might just need to go to um, just slightly past the point of when you feel as if you'll get ready to and then you know, stop it like that until you master it up to that point. Okay. All okay. Right. All, right. All right. And uh, how m- and how many times uh, should I practice? Just practice until I master it. Um. Yeah. Basically. Um. Like you said. Um. How old are you? I'm thirty. Okay. So that means every six days. Um. You don't you you can only ejaculate every six days, but within those six days you can have sex as many times as you choose to. But you have to ejaculate, um, you know, and or you don't want to um, ejaculate, as we would say, you know, except during those you know until the end of the six days, um, you know that way you won't lose your life force, you know. So yeah, you can practice. But practice with the um, intent of not um, actually um, producing the orgasm, you know, in the sense of genital orgasm or the ejaculation until the sixth day. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. And, um, All right. The next call is 757 and ending with 5789. You're on the air. It's going to be five. Seven eight zero. You're on the air. Hello, peace. Peace. Peace, peace. This is brother Ashkenaz from Norfolk, Norfolk, peace, Virginia. Bro. All right. Peace. How, How you, you doing? doing huh? All right. My master teacher. How you doing? Peace. Hotel, brother. Um, yes. this is really uh, this is really uh, I'm gonna just say the blessing. I'm gonna say that word. Uh, this is something because um. I was talking about you last, last night and everything uh, right after <laughs> my experience. And um, I had brought you up, and I was actually saying how thankful and grateful I was for the knowledge that I obtained from you. Because um, last night, you know, I did my motion and everything, and I actually I just did it uh, three times, but I didn't release my life force. You know, I, I kept it. And I went to bed, you know, had a dream, and in my dream, I was uh, I was uh, freestyling <laughs> in my dream, but I was conscious of all the different things I was saying. Like I was encased in darkness, and I was just really like just just feeling myself. And uh, somehow, I just woke up. It was around about 5 a.m. I had to use the bathroom, and then I went back to sleep and. That was that, but um, I have many times before when I've done that same breathing technique. One one other time I did it nine times, and just for me doing it nine times when I went to sleep at that moment, um, I was fully conscious 
in my dream, and um, I was standing in front of a mirror in my dream, and uh, I was just saying really great, powerful things to myself, and uh, I just I just felt like uh, my uh, chakra centers, my spiritual centers, like uh, right in the center of my body, it just started to like spin. I started to move like back and forth, left to right, left, left to right, like really fast at a rapid speed. And then I started like come, I started to come out of my body. I started to see it was like this, like this steam, hazy looking feeling. And as I started to feel that, I let out this loud uh, scream in my dream, like 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 this, just like this loud noise, this real loud noise, and it was like, uh, it really felt like a, an orgasm, but like times like a nine trillion times or something, and I actually thought that I was going to, it felt like I was going to die, I can't, I can't really explain it, it was like I was having an orgasm and I thought I was going to go away from here, like I thought I was going to actually like leave my body. And my wife should tell her she woke me up out of my dream because I kind of shook her up because she said while I was sleeping, I actually let out like some kind of noise and my eyes were rolling in the back of my head. And um, that was that. So I understand everything that you're saying. I mean, it's, it's, it's really deep because I experienced it for myself and I know it's real. I mean, I mean the, the practices are real, and it's just the whole idea of having that self-discipline and staying in high vibrations, positive vibrations, so we can go through these, you know, practice daily, you know. Hello? No doubt about it. Yes, yes. Um, no doubt about it. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, well, well, when you orgasm, actually that is a state of heaven. That is um, a glimpse into the heavens. Um, that is um, how we actually feel, um, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying, um, as we would say, out of the body. You know what I'm saying? Our body right. vibrates higher at a um, higher frequency. So um, but that was symbolic to um, you gaining your glimpse of heaven. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, you know that the pineal gland is the communication between the spirit world and the earthly world or the physical world. So, you know, um, you know, being that you was dreaming, you know, your third eye or pineal gland was activated. And that was all based on the images in which that your pineal was gathering, you know what I'm saying, at that particular time based on the experience in which that you was having, the sexual experience in which that you was having, you know. So um, you could have possibly... Um, came out of your body in order to have a soul travel experience. You know? So, I mean, these are techniques and all of this is information which that, um, you know, Master Sanyata, he actually teaches. You know, um, that's why I was recommending to get his book, Jewel in the Lotus, in which that he goes in depth, you know, in the book, you know. And for those who actually want to take his class, I recommend that they go to www.shindao. www. That's S H E N T A O. Um, www.shindao Energy Arts. I N N E R G Y Arts. A R T S dot com. All right. Um, you know, go to his website. And um, you can get in contact with them. I think you can just actually put in the engine search Shen Dao, and um, you can pull up Sanya um, Master Sanyata Saraswati his website, or you can just type in um, Sanyata Saraswati. That's S U N Y A T A Sanyata Saraswati S A R A S W A T I Saraswati. So um, check him out. Um, he was teaching me um, Qigong and Tai Chi. Before I even met him, months prior to um, me actually coming under his tutelage, he was teaching me um, qigong through via the astral plane, mm. and I didn't even know how he looked. But when I seen him, that's exactly how he looked. Wow! And and then he kept telling me, "I know who you are." 
mm-hmm. you know. So, you know, he also remembered, you know. So, I mean, these are, you know, things in which that, you know, when you, you know, do your practices, you, you definitely reach levels of um, communication, um, whether it's with the um, spiritual world or through the spirit world. All right? Thank you, Al. John D. Oh, oh. Aline? Yes. Yo. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so, um, I had a, I had another question. So um, actually, um, so each time, like um, when I circulate the energy, if I circulate it nine times or ten times, I, do I have to do I have to release myself or or no? I mean, I can I can still just just hold that energy, right? Or well, say it again. I, I didn't get that last okay. part. Okay. Oh. Sound like the phone went out. Okay. What I was saying was when I circulate my energy like that ten times, do I have to release myself after that after that tenth cycle? Oh, you're talking about the whole back technique. Um no, you'll circulate right, the energy right, seven times. You'll circulate the energy seven times. All right, seven times. And you do the ten, and you do um, um, the whole back technique ten times. Okay. Each okay. Time so that you do so whole back, you will circulate the energy seven times. Okay. So mm-hmm. Cycle it seven times and do it. And okay, cycle it seven times and do it. Right. And so, so for example, as you um, as you doing your stroke technique, um, you um, um, you go in and out. Um, as you come out. Um, you'll pull up your anal muscles right. and take your eyes and pull them up towards the heavens and pull the energy mm-hmm. up the spinal column and down the front of the body and circulate that energy in a microcosmic orbit seven times. And then once you do that, then you can go back into the thrusting, um, deep thrust, shadow thrust um, technique. And then each time you get to the 98%, you can um, stop, hold it, and pull the energy up and circulate it seven times again. And then you can go back to, after you finish the circulation, you can go back to um, the thrusting, you know. Okay. And um, not only will it make the experience last longer um, for the male, and again, past being a two-minute man mark, um, it um, increases the um, energy of the female body also so that she can reach her nine stages. All right, all right. I understand. So basically... Seven cycles, you cycle the energy seven times, and you do it in nine sets. So that would be nine times seven, 63, right? Right. Okay, okay. All right. And um, also, one more question I had uh, before also with my age. I'm 24. I'll be 25 this year. So exactly what would that what times point? Point two. Yeah, well, yours would just yours would be um every um as we would say every um well you're 25 so every five and a half days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mhm. All right. Well, yeah. Um, basically, I just want to call and share that share my experience. Um, yes, I've done the practice, and for the brothers. Out there that's listening, yes, this is it is real. Um, going in with the intent, with the serious intent, it, it is real. And uh, much love, brother. Much love, brother Eileen. Same here, God. Appreciate you. Thank you. Peace. Peace. All right, caller. Um, area code seven three one, ending in seven three three one. You're on the line. Yes, I have a question. Great. Yes. Oh, yeah. Come on, this. I was. I was. I was. I'm. I'm. Want to ask a question? I was referring to what y'all was talking about just a few seconds ago. I had a dream of water. Okay. And mm-hmm. I don't know if this is like happening to my third eye, all right, because my grandmother has this same thing. This, I guess it's a gift or whatever, but I had a dream of water two days in a row. 
One day I was drowning. The second day I was jumping in the big sea. Okay, a couple, about a week later, my, my nephew almost drowned in the pool, okay? My sister told me that, and I told her that I had dreams of water. And that I thought that would, that would be the end of it. So it's like I foreseen something that, that almost, that, that actually happened, okay? That, that right. grabbed the step of water. And then a week later, my uncle passed away. He drowned, okay? Gotcha. So I, it was like I was seeing, I see, and this is not the only thing that, that actually, uh, this is not the only time I've actually had these dreams of vision. Could you tell me why is this is this just is this is this a gift from God that I'm that I have because it doesn't come all the time it just come every you know every blue moon you know or or so but it's it's kind of it's not scary but it's like a peculiar thing you know that's happening that's happening to me in my life and I just I want you to, want you to explain this to me because I I'm, I'm really not understanding. Is this is this because I'm cramming on a higher stage of consciousness, or what? What I mean, what is this? All right, um, you have the gift of precognition, um, meaning you have the ability in order to fortune tell you to see the future. Um, you might have been born with a veil over your eyes or over your face, as they say, the old folks say. Um, I have the same gift, so I know exactly what you're talking about, um, being able to see future events. Um, that comes through an activated pineal gland. So that means at least 70 nanograms of melanin is flowing through your bloodstream at all times, so which that shows that your pineal gland is activated. Um, so with that, um, your pineal gland is also, um, if you do any research or study, it is known as the third eye or the all-seeing eye, and it gives you those capabilities of being able to go beyond just the physical and pierce the veil of the illusion and um, going to the various timelines in which that that's what you're actually referring to. So it is a gift. You know, you just have to be able to um, make the gift occur whenever you choose to, not when it just happens. And you do that through mastering the science of breath, which is the connector between the mind and the physical body. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, that's okay. All I, that's all I had to add. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, hold it. Hold Caller, um, area code 832, ending in 8060. You're on the line. You have a question? Peace, peace, Brother Arlene. Peace, Ock. How you doing? This Chad from Houston. Peace. How you doing, Ock? I'm doing good, brother. I have, a, uh, I have, I have two questions for you. Uh, All right. Could you, could you give me that uh, last website to the to the teacher? About the yeah. uh oh, yeah. yeah. Um that's Grandmaster Sanyata Saraswati. That's S U N Y A T A Sanyata and then Saraswati S A R A S W A T I. And his website is www dot shin S H E N Dao T A O Energy I N N E R G Y Arts a r t s dot com. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Okay, now my uh, now my next question. I, I kind of came in on the uh, on the bill at the last minute, but uh, the breathing techniques. Uh, mm-hmm. When I when I when I engage in intercourse with my wife, I've I've actually tried these uh, breathing techniques by uh, when I thrust, breathe slow, mm-hmm. uh, and and breathe very uh, methodically. Right. Uh, but I, when I when I get to the I guess the ninety eight percent I guess I'm I haven't found myself disciplined enough to stop at the ninety eight percent so I, I guess that's what's holding me back from uh, being able to uh, move on to transition to that next level. Right. Well, the thing is, is like I told the other brother, is to actually um, go below ninety eight percent. You know, you might need ninety okay. percent. You know, okay. um, you know, um, try it there, you know, and make sure that you do the um, the circulating of the um, energies through the channels. Because that's mm, what it's okay. about is regeneration, and that's how you regenerate your body is through the amount of energy that you absorb 
um, into your various dantians, whether it's your lower dantian, which is your navel chakra, or your mid, which is your heart, or your upper room, as they would say, um, which is your third eye. Wherever you channel the energy at um, and store it, then you can circulate it in what is called condensation, in which that um, is like transferring ice into water, into vapor, which is steam. That's what you're doing with the microcosmic orbit is changing the frequency of the energy and you're refining it and you are regenerating yourself in the process and you are opening and activating your 12 meridians um, in which that is necessary. These are what is called tubular channels um, in which that energy um, goes through and is lighting up your body like a Christmas tree. So that is the importance of it. And with the body being lightened up like a Christmas tree, Various organs are being restored to the um, various organs are being restored to optimum health, and the twelve pair of cranial nerves in the pineal gland is being fully activated, which gives you ESP or extrasensory perception, and that's really what you want. Perception. Okay. Right. So okay. that is the purpose of these um, hold back techniques is to get you to those levels. Okay. So I, I guess my biggest thing would have to be would just be to practice. Uh, right. what, what about from what about from the more uh, from my wife's perspective? Uh, I guess she would have to control her breathing and relax her body. Right, right, right. Well, um, a good technique. We're actually doing the alternating nostril breath technique um, prior to, and then um, that's what we was talking about. And um, of course, you know. Um, the Reiki can be done on the individuals prior to doing it. Pranic. Healing can be done, removing the negative energy in which that can be clogged up or stagnated energy or debris, or um, bioplasmic negative energy within the auric field, removing that energy and casting it off into a plant or water or um, some dirt. And basically what you're doing is um, making it a ritual and a ceremony, a holistic ritual and ceremony in which that helps with the healing of both individuals. So it's not just one-sided, but the male is the one who is degenerative female, so he has to be more careful about his release of fluids than the woman does um, in that sense. He has yang energy, and she has yin energy, which her energy is more potent and more um, eternal or everlasting. Um, the male's yang energy is more um, temporary um, and is not as lasting, so therefore he has to be more concerned about um, the energy in which that he released. Okay. 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 Well, I appreciate it, brother. I appreciate it. You well. Peace. All right. Peace. All right. Um, let me see. If we got any more callers? All right. Yeah, call it one three four three and then one three four three on the line. One three four three, caller. All right. There's some questions um in the chat room I'm gonna go to. Let's see here. Um, it says, when a couple makes love during lovemaking, does the kundalini energy mix? Um, the auric field is the extension of the kundalini and the chakra system. So, yes, there is a blending of the auras, what is called blending of the conduits, in which that the auras become one uh, when there's a certain level of consciousness through the breath techniques in which that it is reached. And at that particular point, um, the thoughts in which that the male and female resonate at, um, which is electromagnetic energy, uh, which is prana, chi, ki, ra, ashe, um, Holy Spirit, that energy can actually bring forth the thoughts in which that the couple is thinking of at that particular time or thereafter because of the oneness of the of the um of that auric cell. So yes, that is um definitely um mix um in that regard 
Um, let me see. There's another question. Um, some say that um, somebody um, said that the brothers ain't trying to let you touch that spot. The spot is actually the perineum. So we ain't saying put your finger in the anus. We're saying that t- um, about that, that's about a, um, an inch and a half um, um, to two inches actually up from the anus um, to the middle um, portion, about two inches be- um, behind the shortum sac, um, you will reach what is called a perineum, which is like an indenture. Um, it's like a depression area there, and you can actually press that area. Um, don't have to be real hard, but um, that area do need to be pressed in order to um, stop the flow of the um, of the orgasm, um, genital orgasm, so that the brother can actually um, please the woman, make it last longer, and he can channel energy outward. All right, so um, these um, are definitely... Um, I uh, apologize if I I don't see the rest of the questions. Uh, Let me see. All right. Um, That's everything in which that I'm seeing now. So I'll be getting ready to end. And um, I thank you all for um, coming on, checking us out. And um, peace and blessings, y'all. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air, no doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same that your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. 